It can be morally bad depending on, like I said again, the person you're speaking to. For example, there are many people uh, who want to practice, for example, incest. There are people in Europe, I don't know come from Canada, but there are people in Europe who want to practice incest. They are saying, look, we are both adults and we both consent and we are not harming anyone. So why are you saying that's against the law? Now that might be immoral to you and me, but for them it's not immoral. And they are working on the same principle you're working on, which is A, they are not harming anyone, it is consensual, and it is something that is that, that basically agrees with that conscience. There, there is the risk of harming the child. Yeah. What, if they, what if they use contraception? You see what I mean? They got ways around that, because they have they thought about this, but they want to legalize it. Now they're going to the parliament and they want to legalize it as, as something that's a legal uh, paradigm within the, the law itself. You see, this is what I'm saying. There's a difference between bringing in just a secular understanding of the world where everything goes as long as you're not harming someone because that, th that thing can sometimes backfire and it has done in the past. I'm curious, in this, in this case where they're using contraception so there's no risk of a child being born. Then you're okay with that? Am I okay with it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay with it. Mor morally, are you okay with that? I mean, my main question is, so, so what is the harm in this case? I'm curious. No, no, the, their argument is there is no harm and it is consensual and it is something that they both as adults have the right to do. But yours, your principle is the same, isn't it? That as long as they're not harming anyone, yeah. that was the problem with it. So, so, so would you agree in their favor or would you disagree? Because it's the same principle they're arguing as you. I, I didn't know this was a, a, a debate here. Just thinking about it now, I haven't had much time. I would say if they're not harming anyone, then let them do it. Okay. Like, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, I, see, I see little reason why it would be ethically wrong. Why do you think why do you think majority of the countries have got it as illegal? Well, Unless it was ethically wrong or morally wrong. I mean I mean societal well, I agree with myself. There's some things which we see as taboo and, and those taboos have not always been here. They can shift over time. So yeah. I would say I mean just me growing up when, in the eighties, in the nineties, the attitude towards all just say same sex marriage yeah. or homosexuality. Homosexuality, yeah. Completely different than yeah. so Absolutely, it's very taboo yeah. to even talk about in my hometown. Yeah. Very conservative. And so you could say, okay, because I feel somehow icky, because I feel uh, uncomfortable with this topic, does that mean that it's wrong? Or does this mean that I've just been conditioned to think that it's wrong? And so this is to me the question is, okay, who is it harming and, and what is the good and the bad in this? On both so, so you have no problem whatsoever if someone that you know very, very close and near and dear to you would be sleeping with his mom. You wouldn't have a problem with that. I would think it would be very socially strange. Socially strange, yeah. yeah very socially strange. Um, but no, no issues other than that. It's, it's, it's similar to uh, if you think about um, uh, uh, Nazi Germany, yeah. where it was it was legal to persecute Jews. No, that's different because that is obviously harming someone. So let's not compare okay, apples yeah, and pears yeah. because that is literally oppression, isn't it? But here, like I said, they're both adults. They're both are consenting to it, and they both consider it to be their right to express themselves freely, just like the same-sex marriage you're saying. Again, the same thing, because before, it was a taboo and it was considered more immoral and unethical and basically antisocial and so on. But then, gradually, people got used to it. <laughs> so, you see, when people will get used to their sons sleeping with their mothers or the father sleeping with their daughters, maybe it becomes socially acceptable and morally justified somehow. Well, I think that there's maybe two degrees here. There's one which is like our social laws. So we can like, people can somehow embarrass themselves so much that we shun them socially, but that we don't put them in prison. So there's kind of a difference there. Like I, I recognize that you are having sex with your mother. I don't want any part of that. So I'm just not going to hang out with you. So that's one thing. There's another argument, which is okay. We think that this is harming society as a whole. And so we need to penalize these people by throwing them into, by, by punishing them uh, by some like, actual concrete means, putting them in jail, finding them, something like this. And so that's, I think, the distinction. So why, which one would you lean towards? I, I, I have a hard <laughs> time saying okay, we should throw them in jail because if they're not harming someone, okay. I have, I guess, if, if I don't really want to be around them because I find it uncomfortable, then that's my choice. I would just walk away and say, okay, I don't really want to converse with. So you see, we, we, have been, we have come full circle with, with us discussing the fact that 
it's subjective, isn't it? Everything that you see around today is subjective in terms of morality and so on. You see, but don't, don't you think there has to be a higher authority to, to basically someone who draws a line as to what we should do and should not do, what is morally justified and what is immoral, rather than the society and the times dictate to us? Higher, this is what you mean by higher. I do think that we... Oh, well, like, I mean God, basically. That's what I'm trying to get to. Because you see, if someone, I don't know if you believe in God, do you believe in God? Agnostic? agnostic it, okay, yeah. but you, no, really. you you don't believe in God? Okay. Agnostic or you're atheist? No, I'm, I'm more on the atheist side. Okay, that, yeah. fair enough. So, yeah, I mean, so maybe this, this argument actually fits in quite well with your uh, worldview because it is got basically no no dictating, no theocracy, no theological, uh, what do you say, strings being pulled there. This is purely based on what people think about what is morally right, what is mo uh, something that is uh, accepted in the society, something that people kind of either reject or accept based on their feelings. You see? But the point remains, you know, where does society draw the line? And who has that authority? Because if you're just going to allow the majority to dictate that, and the majority can be wrong, so at the end of the day, based on your worldview, who would you put in charge? Or who, who would you give this authority to draw the line? Because I don't know if the government is always right, and we have seen from the past history that yeah. they cannot be always right. Yeah. Yes? But I think like our, our feelings and our intuitions kind of inform our opinions. And Which like, can be wrong like, as well. They can be wrong. But I think still we can have man-made constructs. Like our ethics, maybe I'll give a concrete example. Uh, so like our hospitals. Yeah. We want them to be admitting, they want, we want them to admit everyone fairly. So if, if my friend here, he, he gets injured, you know, and I say, you know, okay, I take him to the hospital and I say, okay, he's seriously injured. I want him to have priority over everyone else. So we say, okay, it's clearly wrong. Like the system needs to be built such that we cater to everyone equally. Just because like he's the most important person to me, that doesn't mean that he should get treatment first. So we need to have the system in place and the, like our, 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 let, our let me put a spanner in that institution. I'll just say our, our institution <laughs> says okay, we need to treat them fairly and we can't have favoritism. So even in this like small instance, even though it's like harming me and if I had my opinion and if if I had my choice, I would put him in front of everyone else. I'm okay understanding that okay, there's a good reason why he's back on the line. And that's how we kind of like create our societies. It's, it's based off of these like But it's not always that. It's not like the first come, first serve, is it? Like for example, if there was a child who was profusely bleeding in front of him and he's not really in that much of a danger, then obviously he'll give the child the priority. Yes. Regardless of whether he came at the last or at the beginning. You see what I mean? The so we, the same. Yeah, yeah. No, the argument is that you give priority based on the circumstance. And then the same goes with whatever happens in our world today. Yes, you do not just say just because somebody out there feels right about a certain situation, you allow them, yes, let's make it legal because this community here thinks it's legal. You do not, maybe you haven't actually looked at the greater harm it does. Yes? How do we, but, how do we judge this greater harm? You, well, you look at, you look at the actual um, incident and then you assess based on that. And that would go for everything. Take, take alcohol, for example. Today, alcohol is legal in all the countries. And we see the, we have every evidence conceivable to us in the 21st century of the impact and the effect and the dangers of alcoholism. Yeah. Either whether you're, you're directly impacted by it or you're indirectly impacted by it. Yeah. There is, but you see most of the governments today have legalized it yeah. and they get revenue from it. Not only the fact that they have legalized, which I call the poison, a known poison and a known harm, and the same goes with cigarettes. Yes, again, and there are huge lobbies which dictate the laws behind this, which have got control within the government. So this is what I'm saying, you see. Today, we have got many things which we know the dangers of. So even after the dangers have been assessed, nothing's been done about it. In fact, it's been promoted even more. You see what I mean? So that's why, coming back to the question again, don't you think there has to be a higher authority to, to make us realize and make us acknowledge that this is something that is necessary for human beings and, and for our survival as a whole, as a community. Because we do not see the advantage or disadvantage of an individual or a particular community, but we should look at the community as a whole. You see, this is, this is something, uh, by the way, I'm a Muslim, and as a Muslim, we believe that the, the laws 
which have been given to us in terms of what has been forbidden and what has been uh, allowed and permitted. We call that the haram and the halal, the forbidden being the haram and the permissible being the halal. This is something quite necessary in our, uh, in our community, whether today, whether yesterday or whether tomorrow. It's always because if, if we know someone of a higher authority who, has, who knows us better than anyone else because he's created us, then he would give us such, such laws which are good, beneficial for us, plus warn us at the same time which are harmful to us. So you see in Islam it nips it in the bud about the alcohol. Alcohol is not permissible. And the same goes with the cigarettes. Yes, anything that harms your body, you stay away from it. And that, and the same goes with any narcotics, any drugs or anything that harms your body. <laughs> the same goes with eating fatty food as well, which is bad for you, you know. So I'm not saying just alcohol, or I'm not just saying drugs. I'm saying anything that harms your body is something that is, you should stay away from. And this is what we instill within our communities, within our belief and within our uh, our families as well. Is it, is it something that, so I agree it's things that you should stay away from. Yeah. Is it something that uh, should be discouraged or something that should be illegal and you're punished if you do it? Well, it depends on the danger. For example, if things like alcohol and drugs, which is a clear danger, yeah. then I think that should be not permissible. At least that's my opinion. Because you see, it is not re it's not really taking away the rights of the people. Because you see, if somebody demands for example, if your child demands to drink poison, yes, you will take it away from them, would you not? You wouldn't give him a choice. Do you do you want it or do you not want it? Because you know clearly that is something harmful for you. You know that is a clear danger for you. So you, what would you do? You would say that is not permitted for you. But I think this period, and that's it. Quickly in this context, in the child-parent relationship, we kind of assume that children don't have like um, they are responsible enough to make their own decisions. Are you saying if you had an 18-year-old child, you would, you would give him a poison? Well, Seriously? I, I, no, I would say at some point, like we kind of hand the keys to the car over to the people, to, to our children. We say, okay, now you're old enough to make your own decisions. No, that's different. You see, that's apples and oranges. If you know something is clearly dangerous, for example, drugs, yeah. and if your child has, who's now 18 years old wants to do drugs, what would you say to him or her? Would you say, it's your choice, you're grown up, you're adult enough, or would you try to discourage them and basically forbid them even? As a good parent, I think any good parent would actually forbid them. I would, I would highly, highly discourage it, but I wouldn't forbid it. I, I, I don't know if it's 18 or 21 or 19, whenever uh, I or somebody feels like somebody becomes an adult, I think that they should have their own decisions over their own life as long as they don't, aren't harming other people. What if they're harming themselves? Then that's their choice. So really? If, if so you as a good parent, would give them the choice to harm themselves. If, if that's something that they want to do, I would again highly discourage it. I, I would try to reason with them, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't lock them up. Oh no, no, no! I didn't mean locking them no, up. No, no, of course. What I meant is, you you stick to your guns and you say it's forbidden for you. And then if they do it, then the onus is on them, isn't it? Because now they are adult, 18 or over. The onus is on them. But you, as a parent, you will stick to your gun. You say no, it's not permitted. It's not allowed. Okay. So you see, this is something which is known danger. Remember, it's not like a car. A car is not really dangerous unless you use you misuse it. I mean if you're going to use that then you wouldn't even go in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> because you can misuse many things in the kitchen.